got on there. And your awesome protection plan. You can shop online with a keyboard and a mouse. Pick out your new Kia. What can Soto Bello do now? Right now, the o'clock bombing intensifies in Ukraine. And this despite Russia coming to the table to talk, the mixed messages and where peace talks went as the international community steps up its support of Ukraine. And stepping up here in Boston, the church gathering supplies to send to refugees cleaning their homes. A cold end of the month of February, We're tracking some up and down temperatures this week and a couple chances for some rain and snow. Plus, celebrating 111, the Wellesley woman ringing in records. WBZ News at 8 starts now. And right now at 8 o'clock, Russia not letting up in Ukraine. This heavy bombing campaign taking place in Ukraine's second largest city of Kharkiv. Multiple people have been killed there over the past few days. Here is a live look at the city of Kiev, a quieter night in the country's capital, but there are fears that could be short-lived. Good evening to you. I'm David Wade. And I'm Aridis Rodriguez. International sanctions are also taking a toll on Russia. And as Natalie Brand reports, that may have helped talks between Russia and Ukraine today. After five hours of talks, Russian and Ukrainian delegations agreed to resume. Also tonight, gathering goods for Ukraine. A Jamaica Plain Church calling on its parishioners to help bring relief supplies for that war-torn country. WBZ's Julie McDonald is live there tonight. Julie, they're asking for anything from medical supplies to winter coats. Yeah, that's right, David. And of course, donations of money are still the thing that will get to the crisis fastest. And Boston neighbors have been so generous. More than $840,000 raised by the local nonprofit Sunflower of Peace. Um, but here on the other side of the world, there are just so many volunteers, many of them strangers, who are doing what they can to support Ukrainian relief efforts. I'm here at St. Andrew's Ukrainian Orthodox Church. They've been so touched by kindness and generosity from parishioners, also from non-members, though. It was a Roslindale neighbor who pulled up tonight with boxes full of warm jackets, hand sanitizer, gauze. Those items will be added to a huge collection by that Boston nonprofit I mentioned, Sunflower of Peace. It'll be shipped to Poland this week, then driven to the refugees and first responders who need it most. Right now, the situation is really still unfolding. Um, it's very, very um, hectic right now, uh, very chaotic. And so um, we're waiting to see what's, what's really needed um, and what really will be most useful. And as volunteers assess that continuing need long term, there will be a Sunday collection of medical supplies and other essentials here at St. Andrews for the foreseeable future. Live in Jamaica Plain tonight, I'm Julie McDonald, WBZ News. Coming together to help each other, Julie, thank you. We're now seeing just how much the Russian invasion of Ukraine is impacting gas prices. AAA says that a gallon of self-serve regular in Massachusetts is at 362, and that's up eight cents since last week and nearly a quarter since last month. Oil prices spiked to more than $100 per barrel before dropping again into the mid-90s. Today, the Boston Athletic Association announced it will give all Ukrainians who are currently registered for the Boston Marathon or the BAA 5K a full refund with the option to defer to next year. And that affects about 50 athletes. The BAA says that running is a global sport and that they stand with Ukraine. David? President Biden in Redis, has revised his first State of the Union address to talk about the crisis in Ukraine tomorrow night. Tonight, security fencing is up around the U.S. Capitol, and the National Guard is actually on standby. No specific threats there, but police are increasing patrols because of the January 6th riots. CBS News will carry the State of the Union and the Republican response as well, live tomorrow night, starting at 9 o'clock, over on WBZ Channel 4. Turning. Look out at the city of Boston tonight. It was a chilly day throughout New England, but we are in for a slight warm up. That's according to our chief meteorologist, Eric Fisher, who's standing by with a check of the forecast. You're telling us there's a chance. Yeah, we're closing out the month on a very chilly note. It will start March cold in the morning, but a little bit of a bounce after that. Tonight, temperatures already in the teens in some spots. Setting up will be a very cold night because we have those mainly clear skies. Few high clouds making the way across the region. Not enough for a good insulating blanket, and the winds are calming down. The air is 
dry. So we wake up tomorrow morning, we start the new month, we're in the single digits and teens out the door. So we are certainly bundled up. And there'll be a better bounce in the afternoon, up around 40 degrees. But we'll also see more cloud cover, so there's a bit of a trade-off tomorrow. And then as we head toward around dinner time, we'll see a chance for a few scattered showers as well. A milder day, though, closer to the averages for this time of the year, which is right around 40 degrees for a high temp. We start off with the dry weather. We'll see those increasing clouds. And then as we get toward the evening, some scattered rain showers, maybe some wet flakes in the high terrain will move across the area. We'll soften up the snow and ice pack a little bit. And Wednesday, we'll make way for a decent amount of melting taking place because behind this system, we'll be jumping up into the 40s during the afternoon. We'll have bright skies, pretty pleasant stuff outside. And then as we head into the overnight, the next system will arrive here Wednesday night into Thursday. That one does have some more cold air behind it. We'll take a look at that full forecast coming up. David? All right, Eric, we'll see you in a few minutes. Thank you. Tonight, an arrest in a deadly shooting of a high school senior. 18-year-old Javon Harris is facing murder and conspiracy charges in the death of 17-year-old Nathan Paul. Paul was a senior at Weymouth High School. He was found shot to death in a car in Quincy two weeks ago. That suspect will be in front of a judge tomorrow. Now to the latest on the pandemic, and the numbers continue to trend in the right direction. Today, the state reported 1,600 new cases. Keep in mind, that's over three days, and it's the lowest Monday number since July. 31 new deaths reported, and the positivity rate actually fell down below 2%. And it was a new beginning for school children across the state today. You can call it a breath of fresh air for a lot of kids. Many returned to class after vacation without wearing masks. And as WBZ's Louisa Moeller shows us, that meant you could actually see the smiles of students who were ready for a change. A high school basketball player who recently collapsed during a game has sadly passed away. The family of Preston Settles of Newton says that 15-year-old was a fighter right to the end. It was on February 5th that Preston was playing in a game at the Brooks School in North Andover. He went to the bench to catch his breath, but then collapsed and stopped breathing. It took hours to get his heart beating again, but again, he passed away at Tufts Medical Center last night. A celebration of his life will be held on Friday at Trinity Church in Copley Square. Well, Major League Baseball has set a midnight deadline. If a deal with the players isn't done, regular season games will be canceled. Our sports director, Steve Burton, joins us now. Steve, opening day for Fenway for the Red Sox, March 31st, and now that's in jeopardy. And one of the biggest baseball fans I Love know. baseball. Maybe we should go to the negotiations there and see go. if it'll help. We'll get it done. <laughs> Tonight, an I-team investigation. State health care workers attacked on the job. Why some nurses and lawmakers say more should be done to keep hospital employees safe? Most of the books are about joy. It is a small bookstore inside a Waltham home, specially curated for children of color. And celebrating a big birthday, the Wellesley woman celebrating her 111th birthday. Her advice to aging well. Can't wait for that. Plus, liquor stores across the state taking Russian-made alcohol off their shelves. We're going to tell you about the new bill that's been filed to the state house that would actually take it a step further. We'll be back in a moment. Russia invades Ukraine. Explosions reported tonight in Kiev. Stay with WBZ and CBS News for round the clock coverage. Here is the latest on what we know right now. Up to the minute developments. President Biden says the measures will hurt Russia. The humanitarian crisis. You can see the destruction. The economic repercussions. A perfect storm driving crisis up. The impacts here in Boston. The invasion is hitting home. Oh, for continuing coverage from across the world, stay with WBZ and CBS News. Hi, on TV 38. One of the names. The cold still sticking around after a really chilly weekend. Hey, I'm pretty excited that tomorrow's March. Yeah, tomorrow's March. Today's the last day of climatological winter, so that means that tomorrow we're not going to see below freezing temperatures. Well, tomorrow afternoon we'll get above that 32 degree mark, that's for sure. And uh, as we look forward to March, March is a month where things happen. It's a frustrating month, but things start to bloom. You got more sunshine, we start greening up a little bit, so we'll start to see some of that progress over the next few weeks. It's a cold start, and yes, we have some up and down temperatures this week. Those a bit unsettled, some rain and snow showers, but I wouldn't call it in like a lion. I mean, most of these are minor systems pushing on through. And then milder temps are possible as we head toward the end of the weekend and into next week. As for climatological winter, 
Yes, today, the last day. It was warmer than average. December winter basically didn't exist. It started around January 7th for us. January was the cold month and our snowy month as well. February coming in milder than average. And overall, it's in the top 20 warmest, actually, for most of southern New England. Then you look at the snowfall. It's an interesting story between Boston and Worcester. It basically, if you were in the band this spring, it feels completely different outside. So here's a look at the full seven day. As we head to the weekend right now, it looks mostly cloudy and I'm pretty chilly on Saturday. Any light wintry mix that's in the area Saturday night into Sunday morning would change over to rain as we start warming up and a chance to be in the 50s with some scattered rain showers on Monday to start next week. Overall, I'd say pretty seasonable and uh, not too aggressive start to March, which can sometimes be a really stormy month for us. You extend your pet's life. The new research underway here in the United States and what it could mean for extending human life. You're watching the WBZ News at 8. Right here on TV 38, join us now every weekday for the latest news, weather, and sports right here at 8 o'clock. This is all new at 8. First responders in Kingston had to make an icy water rescue today. A dog fell into a pond near Elm Street. Apparently, Boots Chase stores are pulling Russian vodka and other products from their shelves. And a local lawmaker is actually proposing to ban Russian products from the state. And the talk on Beacon Hill tonight, why that move could actually backfire. All right, Steve is going to be up with the very latest on the Bruins. A late start out in L.A., but Steve's ready to talk about them. We'll be back in a moment. As a little girl growing up, I didn't get the opportunity to have books that look like me. The Waltham woman launching her own bookstore with a special mission. Coming up next. Try something. 